Our first Symfony 4 JSON API is going to be created using as few extra dependencies as possible. It's actually going to make our lives a little bit harder, but it's going to give us an understanding of what the more specialized packages such as the Friends of Symfony REST bundle or FOS REST bundle and specific projects like the Symfony API platform are doing to make our lives that little bit easier. So we're going to jump right in and we're going to start working with the BHAT test project that we created in the previous few videos. However, this basic Symfony 4 JSON API project will be entirely standalone. And this is to ensure that our tests are reusable amongst many different implementations. Now on the site, I have a tutorial called the Beginner's Symfony 4 tutorial. And there's a link to that in the show notes. And if you've worked through that, then we started with a pre-provided setup project by Symfony called the Website Skeleton. Now the Website Skeleton is really cool in that it roughly equates to the same setup that we got when installing a new Symfony 2 or Symfony 3 project. So we got all the features like Twig and Doctrine and Routing and that, and it was all pre-configured for us. But that said, we actually don't need the vast majority of all this extra stuff for our simple Symfony 4 JSON API. Now it's up to you whether you start with the website skeleton and then remove all the bits that you don't need or just leave them or you start with the symphony skeleton which is a much more stripped down starting point and then we add the bits to this project. I'm actually going to start with the symphony skeleton. So we're going to get Composer to do the hard work for us. We're going to run the Composer create project using the symphony skeleton as our starting point and then our project name is just going to be symphony 4 and API. Of course you could call yours anything you want but that roughly describes what we're building here. So once we've run the composer create project command, the first thing to do is make sure that you change directory into your Symfony 4 JSON API directory. There's nothing worse than running composer require and then you realize you're in the wrong directory. Now, even though we want to use as few extra dependencies as possible, some dependencies are going to be mandatory. So we're going to do a composer require against Symfony form, the Symfony ORM pack and the Symfony monologue bundle. Now you can skip the monologue bundle if you'd like, but if things go wrong, as they often do, then Monologue keeps around useful logs as to why. So you may be wondering why we need the Symfony form. Well, that's because any data that comes into our system is going to have to go through the form first for things like validation and generally ensuring that the submitted data is in a good shape. And the Symfony ORM pack includes Doctrine and Doctrine migrations. We won't actually need the migrations, but we will need Doctrine to save and retrieve stuff from our database. Now on the subject of the database, as we covered in the database setup video, we're using Docker specifically with our Docker compose file and we're also using a make file. So if you haven't watched the video on setting up your database and you don't understand any of this at this point, then I would advise watching that video first before continuing. I was going to paste both of those files in here. Say okay to that. Okay, leave me alone. I don't need Postgres for this project, so I'm just going to get rid of that one. And as we saw when we run the make dev command, it's going to bring up our dockerized MySQL instance in this case. It's going to be available on port 3306, which is the default, and these are our credentials. Now these are important because as this command now says, we need to modify our database URL config in the .env file. So in our .env file, just need to make sure that these match up. So as a DB user, DB password will be available on our local host 127.0.0.1 on port 3306, and our database name is DB dev. Again, this matches up one to one with the settings that we provided here. It also says that we need to configure the driver, as in MySQL, and the server version 5.7 in config packages doctrine.yaml. It's config packages doctrine.yaml. Well, we are set already to be using MySQL and 5.7, so there's no change that we need to make there. So by default, Git's already configured for our project. That comes configured as soon as we've run that composer create project command. I'm now going to add everything in this project into Git and then I'm going to do my first commit which is just going to be a commit with the message of init. Okay, and then control and L just to clear off there. Now one extra thing to note is because we've used Docker, our database already exists so we don't need to run the typical doctrine database create command. So there's a few extra optional dependencies that are going to help us out during development. I'm going to run a composer require with dash dash dev to make sure that these go into my require dev section in composer.json. And I'm going to put these on new lines, which is why I'm using the slash there. 
Now you don't need to do this, it's only because I'm running out of screen real estate when I'm doing this, but I'm going to require Symphony Maker Bundle, the Symphony Profiler Pack, and also the Symphony Web Server Bundle. So the Maker Bundle gives us a quick way to generate new controllers and forms and entity stubs and so on. The Profiler Pack gives us access to the slash underscore profiler route, which is super useful whether you're developing a JSON API or a typical website or whatever. And the Web Server Bundle gives us a nicer wrapper around the built-in PHP Web Server. And that's the basics of our Symphony 4 project up and running. So the first thing that we're going to do is check that the BHAT health check feature is quickly movable to a passing state. So just to give you a quick recap, we've got the health check feature and then we're going to have the slash ping endpoint and we expect to get back a 200 response code and the response body should be Pong. Okay, in order to do this, we need to get our web server up and running. So I'm going to run a Bing console server start. So it says our server's listening on 127.0.0.1 on port 8000 and we made a change in our bhat yaml to send our request into example.com so i'm just going to change that back now to 127.0.0.1 i'm going to send in our first test to our real working api so it looks like we've got a situation where our database connection is being refused so let's quickly take a look at that now, as you'll remember, we put inside our feature context a before scenario hook, which cleans up our database. So expecting to find a database called basic underscore API. Ours is called DB dev, which is fine, but we don't actually have our database server up and running. So I'm just going to run a make dev to bring up our database server at this point. Now, I'm still expecting our bhat test to fail because we've not actually implemented that slash ping endpoint. Again, though, things still don't look right. I'm just going to do a docker ps minus a. So our database is up. It may just be that we've sent this in too quickly. Yeah, so there we go. If you send it in a little bit too quickly, the container won't have come up and it won't have actually created the database just yet. So give it about seven seconds, I've found on average. So now it's saying that base table or view is not found. Well, that's true as well because we don't actually have the album entity set up yet. So what I'm going to do just to make this a little bit more pleasant is I'm just going to disable that before scenario hook as we're not yet at the part where we've got the database to worry about. So just putting a space there disables this. Okay, last time. That's fine, we're getting a lot further now. We're sending in that ping request, but we're getting back a 404. Well, that's to be expected. We don't yet have a controller or a root. So it's unsurprising that this actually fails. So from our Symphony 4 JSON API, let's use the maker bundle to create ourselves a health check controller. So I'm gonna do a make controller. I'm just gonna call this the health check controller. Now notice that it's created us an index HTML twig for the health check endpoint. We don't actually need this, so feel free to delete it. It's brought it in because we have twig configured and we have twig configured because we've got the profiler pack. So the maker bundle is actually trying to help us as best it understands our setup. So inside the source directory, we've now got our new controller, the health check controller. We're gonna change this root to slash ping. I'm gonna get rid of all of this and we're just gonna return a new JSON response with the string of pong. This should be enough to satisfy our test. So let's try sending that in now. And there we go, our first passing test. So it's a quick win. It validates that our setup is working on a basic or fundamental level. So let's get on to doing some more interesting things with it.